I'm Jeff Power, senior writer for Real Time Fantasy Sports, and welcome to another edition of the Real Time Fantasy Sports Show. On today's show, I'm joined by my son, Henry. Hello. And we're here today to preview the tight end position. This is the last of our position previews. We've done quarterback, running back, receiver, and now we're up to tight end. And we are going to preview that today on the Real Time Fantasy Sports Show. Henry, you excited about doing that today? Yeah, very excited. Before I get to that, though, I did want to mention we have all sorts of leagues going off here at Real Time Fantasy Sports. Go to rtsports.com. You can check out all the leagues we have to offer. We have our our famous money leagues, our best ball leagues, our dime best ball, just $10 to get in these dime leagues as well. All-American fantasy championship, $300,000, best ball championship, $50,000, all sorts of different formats, all sorts of different games. You're looking for a fantasy game to play. We likely run it. So go to rtsports.com, check us out today and sign up for one of our leagues. We're drafting around the clock. So drafts are going off nonstop. If you want to get in a league right now, you can likely do that. Just go to rtsports.com. Okay, Henry, let's talk about the tight end position for the coming season. Uh, First of all, before I get to specific players, we're going to give you some targets, guys we're avoiding, Mm -hmm. some late round picks as well, and also some rookies. But just the position in general, how are you approaching that come draft day? You have any certain strategy with the tight end spot? Well, this year, I don't think I'm going to go huge on a tight end, really. I don't want to go, like, get either of the big guys. I know, like, they're very consistent. They get you a lot of points, but I think it's a little risky going for them where there's where you want to get more running backs, wide receivers. Positions are a lot more thin. This position is kind of thin, but you can take some gambles. And there's some guys out there in lower rounds you can get for a decent price. I'm kind of the same way. I just recently did a draft where I took Darren Waller the first time I've taken one of the so-called elite tight ends. And I didn't really like the way my team looked after that. You you really take a hit, uh, kind of a trickle-down effect after you take that big tight end like Waller or Kelsey. You're going to get hurt with your second running back or second receiver. So I think you're better off getting guys a little later. I love a guy I'm going to mention is one of my targets. You can mm-hmm. get after the elite guys. So maybe go mid-round, kind of go the platoon route at the tight end spot. I kind of feel that's the best way to approach it personally. I'm not opposed to taking one of those top guys because they're really good, like Kelsey yeah. Waller. But I think it just kind of hurts the dynamic of your team a little bit. And I'm not sure their point differential is going to make up for it uh, compared to the other mm-hmm. tight ends. So let's dive into the tight end position right now, Henry. Let's talk about targets. Uh, give mm-hmm. me a guy you're targeting this year. Earl Smith Jr. He gets to take over the starting duties at tight end this year for the Vikings at the Cal Rudolph finally on. Vikings are a team that utilizes this position, position a lot. And Smith had 16 plus fantasy points in two of his last four games in the season. He got he's a guy that I'm targeting in most of my leagues, and I like him a lot this year. Okay, so I teased it, and now I'm going to tell you who I who I absolutely love this year. TJ Hawkinson. Mm-hmm. He really took his game to a new level last year. I think it can be even better this season. The Lions have next to no quality options at receiver. I mean, Brashard Perryman's our number one right now. Hawkinson's a guy. I think he's going to get a ton of targets. They could be playing from behind a lot. I think Jared Goff will look at him often in this offense. And if I don't get one of those elite guys, if I want to get somebody good uh, at the tight end, I think he's capable of finishing near the top. I think Hawkinson's a guy because you can get him in like the sixth or so round of draft. So that's one of my definite targets for the coming season. How about another target for you, Henry? I have Dallas Goddard. He missed five games because of injury last year and still managed to finish 20th overall in tight end scoring. He had four games with double-digit fantasy points, and he also had three games of 75 more yards. Goddard had at least four receptions in eight of his 11 games he played last year, and I just like him a lot this year. I think he'd be a great option at the tight end position. Okay, another target of mine. Again, kind of the theme here, if you want to wait, I think this is a guy that's going to produce well. Noah Fant, he managed to finish eighth overall in fantasy tight end scoring last year, Henry, and he did that with terrible quarterback play. Mm -hmm. I know Teddy Bridgewater isn't you know, Aaron Rodgers or uh, uh, Tom Brady, but still, I think he's an upgrade over what they used last year if he's the starter. And I think that's good for him. I think he could even lead this Broncos offense in targets. He's a talented playmaker. I think he can improve improve on last year. I think he's capable of being top five overall. So now, Mm -hmm. Henry, we talked about the guys we're targeting. Let's go on the flip side. Guys we're avoiding. Mm -hmm. Who are you avoiding this year? I have Evan Ingram. Kyle Rudolph is around this year, which could take some playing time away. And he had 11 drops last year, which is a terribly high number. And the Giants have added more weapons with Kenny Galladay. And there's a lot of other people there, and I just don't like Evan Ingram. I don't want any part of him this year. 
Yeah, a little bit worried about Ingram, too, because all the drops, and he got a ton of looks last year, and mm -hmm. he still didn't produce that well. Now they have more options, so that's a good mm -hmm. call. I'm kind of worried about him as well. I'll give you a guy who signed a big contract in the offseason I don't like, Hunter Henry. Mm -hmm. So I thought he looked a lot better before Jonu Smith was signed, but Jonu Smith's there. Mm -hmm. They're going to split work at the position. I know they could be on the field at the same time, but I still think that takes away targets from Henry. i just not sure he's going to reach his potential. I think he's going to finish with similar numbers to what he's had the last few seasons with the Los Angeles Chargers, mm -hmm. and those numbers haven't been that great. He's been a reliable starting tight end, but nothing off the charts. I think he'll just be, you know, a consistent option with a fairly low ceiling on a week-to-week -week basis. So I'm not too big on Hunter Henry this year. How about another guy you're avoiding, Henry? Robert Tunyon. I think he's a little more touchdown dependent. He had 11 touchdowns last year. They also have Aaron Rodgers, who's a huge question mark for the Packers. And he started 59 times last year, which is a very low number, mostly probably in the red zone. I just don't know if I won this year, especially with that big question mark around Aaron Rodgers. All right, a guy I'm avoiding, Tyler Higby. Many had high hopes for Higby last season after his huge finish the previous year. I think he's kind of living off that finish from two years ago, but he's been inconsistent when in a starting role. His season high in yards last year was just 67. He had more than 50 yards just four times. I know Gerald Everett was there, but it's not like he was taking a ton of work from him. Both those guys were on the field a decent amount of time. Everett's gone now. I still don't think that leads to big numbers for Higby, and he's going too rich. He's too rich for my blood right now uh, with the way he's getting drafted in leagues, and I'm just going to let somebody else use him. Okay, Henry, how about a late-round gamble? We talked about the position being one maybe that you can look at later in drafts. How about a guy you can get? Uh, I'll go first because I got a couple of them, and you okay. have one. Uh, so a late-round gamble, somebody you can take late, maybe mm -hmm. might outproduce his ADP. So I just actually talked about this guy but he's gone now. Uh, he's no longer with the Los Angeles Rams, but Gerald mm -hmm. Everett, he's kind of guy I've been looking at late in drafts, get his best season to date last year, caught 41 passes for 417 yards. He was actually 24th overall in fantasy tight end scoring despite splitting work with Higby. I think he'll be the main guy in Seattle from day one this year. I think he can produce consistent numbers and a very good offense. So that's a guy I think worth a gamble late in drafts. How about you, Henry? And Anthony Berkser. Berkser got most of the work in his career. Got most work of his career in his backup role last season, finishing with 39 receptions and 30, 387 yards and one touchdown. And he's 26th overall as a backup tight end. And now Johnny Smith is gone. There's a little conversation for tight end for the Titans. I just like Berkshire a lot this year, and I'm going to take a gamble on him. Okay, one more uh, late round gamble for me is Adam Troutman. So Troutman showed flashes of good things his rookie year. Had 15 catches on just 16 targets, and he averaged 11.4 yards per reception. He didn't get a whole lot of chances with Jared Cook around. Cook's gone now. I think Trotman's the top pass-catching tight end on this roster. I think he's got a chance to play a much bigger role. I know they have a few questions at, at quarterback for New Orleans this year, but still, I think Trotman's worth a late-round grab. New Orleans has a history of producing good tight end numbers, and I think Trotman could surprise. Okay, let's talk about rookies, Henry, and I think – this rookie class isn't the most exciting. Yeah. There's a couple good players, but after that, it goes downhill yeah. in a hurry. So I think when it comes to drafting people for fantasy, there's really only a couple guys mm -hmm. that I would draft. And I'll let you take everybody's favorite uh, rookie tight end this year as, you, as as a guy you can talk about. Let, let, go ahead and talk about him. Yeah, pretty easily the best tight end in the draft and probably give me pretty good fantasy tight end going forward. Kyle Pitts may consider him to be the most surefire pick in this draft. Pitts is a big-time talent. He performed very well in Florida. I love him a lot. I think he's going to have a great Im immediate impact in that Falcons offense with only the person to compete with really Calvin Ridley in that offense in the passing game. I like him a lot this year, and I think he's very athletic, great hands. I like him a lot. I like Pitts, too. I know some people say – uh, rookie tight ends have a history of starting slow, mm -hmm. but I think built Pitts is kind of built different, really mm -hmm. big time talent. And like you said, not a lot of competition for targets outside of Calvin Ridley. So I think Pitts is set up for great things. Mm -hmm. The only other rookie I would consider drafting is Pat Fryermuth, uh, the second round pick from Pittsburgh. They hope to have finally found a starting tight end after the last few years. Eric Ebron's still there. Mm -hmm. It's going to compete with him, but Ebron's not getting any younger. I think Fryermuth uh, is the guy going forward he has good size hands for the position mm -hmm. not a huge big play threat but does well in the wet red zone also does well in moving the chains get picking up tight ends and we know ben roethlisberger likes to look at the tight end so i think mm -hmm. fire could be worth a late round grab 
and one of the other rookie impact tight ends mm -hmm. for this coming season. Okay, Henry, we just previewed that tight end position. We have all the previews up in the draft guide on this YouTube channel as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to these videos and we're gonna keep pumping them out as we get ready for the start of the mm -hmm. season. Henry, thanks so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, this has been Jeff Power for Real Time Fantasy Sports. And Henry Power. Have a great day, everyone.